गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई थैंक दी माई रेजिडेंट एज वेल एज माई फैकल्टी मेंबर्स गिविंग मीन एनकरेजमेंट टू डू मोर वीडियोज अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेंट केसेस सो डेट आई कैन डिसमिनेट माई टीचिंग नॉलेज टू दी ऑल माई other colleagues today i thought of uh, sharing with you a very important clinical feature of a child with achondroplasia now achondroplasia the literal term is a basically a dwarfism and it is one of the most common cause of disproportionate short stature now the other important cause in pediatric age group is the rickets now we have other causes of proportionate short stature that is pituitary deficiency the hormonal deficiencies and all but here the i i would like to say about this proportionate short stature which is the most common cause this is a child who is just 9 year who is 9 years of age and the child came to us that the child is not growing well having seen the child you would appreciate this child you see we call it in the circus also uh, kind of a bona so this is but basically if you see this child closely this child has got a normal face this child has got short limbs this is called the upper torso is normal the upper limb is quite okay the lower limb the lower part the lower part is shorter so what we call it as a rhizomelic short stature so in rhizomelic short stature you have these upper limbs these are shorter than the total limb the limb length so this is a very important cause we call it under the comes under the skeletal dysplasia and it is an autosomal dominant inheritance it's a genetic disorder with autosomal dominant inheritance achondroplasia basically uh, if i ask you this has got some very important clinical features which are there all there in this child starting from the skull the child has got a widened skull, skull. if you see from this side the child has got a large skull the child has got prominent forehead the child has got depressed bridge of the nose so that is what you are all finding usually these children of course it is not in this child they have short eustachian tubes so these usually these children come with recurrent history of uh, ear discharges or for luckily in this child when i was asking the mother Uh, the uh, she says there has been no problem about the discharges or anything so there is nothing like that but yes now going coming down you always would found will find these these upper limbs little short then here in this child you have no hepatosplenomegaly so basically uh, this is these are all the clinical features of course i'll discuss the radiological features also which are very characteristic following the clinical features but i wanted to shoot first i wanted to tell you about this now what is happening is uh, how do they they need to be socially well kept because they they usually they become they are the become the laughing stock for the community but let me tell you they have a very they have a normal intelligence some of the children may have difficulty in growing in the initial period crawling standing but after that they because because of the problems of the pelvis they sometimes they, they walk is little difficult let me see idhar beta idhar se chal ke dikhao thoda thoda sa chalne mein mushkil unko hota hai so they have that otherwise uh, that is what is the uh, rhizomelic short stature which i said as i said there is some genetic defect and we should try to find out the gene disorder here and uh, if i am correct to say f f r g g r g no some i'm trying to recollect that the genetic defect is there now uh, the child is intelligently studying in the 9 years old studying in this third class third standard that's what i was basically wanting to focus on the clinical features anything you want to ask me you can always ask me so i just wanted to focus on the achondroplasia main aapko baki cheeze dikhana chahta hu one more thing uh, I uh, just see the hands the hands are very short see this the metacarpals the phalanges they are short plus they have got a tri radiate hand the gap between the third and the fourth this is much more so that is why 1 2 and 3 so it's a tri radiate hand so they have a tri radiate hand 
they have shot metacarpals and phalanges, which you can focus it here. Now, this child is normal intelligence, everything I said. They have a very normal life. They have a small life, they are more prone to infections. It's basically a genetic disorder, yes. It can run in families, but uh, I having asked the history, there is no family history. So, that's all. Now, having told you about the clinical features of achondroplasia, I thought of sharing with you the radiological features in little detail. For this, I requested Professor Vinita Rathi. She is a director professor working in UCMS and GTP hospital to speak about the radiological features in little details. So, just listen to those radiological features which are very so very important in achondroplasia. As you know, is a short limb dwarfism. It is also called rhizomelic type of dwarfism. That means that the femurs, femuri and the humeri, they are short in length. But these are uh, features which are apparent clinically. Radiographically, on x-rays, we have other features which can make the diagnosis of achondroplasia. This is a lateral view of the skull. Here we see that the cranial vault is large, but the skull base is small. The foramen magnum may be small, although that is not apparent on the plain x-ray. Also, a J-shaped cella, that is the pituitary fossa, may be J-shaped. That feature is also not very well seen on this x-ray. One of the most diagnostic x-rays is an anteroposterior view of the spine, that is the dorsolumbar spine. Here, we can see that each vertebral body has two oval structures seen on either side within the body. These are the pedicles. Now, we measure the distance between these two pedicles and normally, in a normal child, the interpedicular distance, that is the distance between the two pedicles, increases as we come down the spine. That is, from the dorsal spine towards the lumbosacral region, the interpedicular distance will increase. However, in achondroplasia, as we can see in this x-ray, the interpedicular distance remains constant. In others, the distance may even decrease. So this feature on an AP view of the dorsolumbar spine is very characteristic of achondroplasia. On a lateral view of the same spine, we may see a bullet-shaped vertebra at the dorsolumbar junction. Uh, that is not very well seen in this case. An X-ray of the pelvis, AP view, also shows a very characteristic appearance in achondroplasia. You can see that the shape of the pelvic inlet is shaped like a champagne glass. Uh, you can trace the outline of the pelvic inlet and the stem. It looks like a champagne glass. Also, the sacrosciatic notches are narrow and the iliac blades are squared. In addition, in this x-ray, we can also see that the lower metaphyseal ends of the femur, femurae are flared. So, they look like trumpets. So, the champagne glass pelvis is a characteristic feature of achondroplasia. An x-ray of both hands, PA view, has also been done in this child. Although a trident hand, which is characteristic of achondroplasia, can be seen clinically. But in this x-ray, on the left side, in the left hand, you can see that the distance between the third and fourth fingers is increased. So, this is a sort of a trident. So, this is also seen in achondroplasia.